Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome into Cash It. I'm Howard Bender. Got Adam Ronis here. And it's fantasy baseball season, baby. Oh, baby, is what I'm talking about. Uh, drafts are in full swing right now as uh, the regular season starts on March 30th. The World Baseball Classic has officially come to an end, so all of those players are returning to their camps, their spring trainings. Um, there are still plenty of drafts to go between now and then, so super exciting time along with MLB, and that's just that's just MLB. We got more on top of that in other sports as well. Adam, what's going on? How's your draft season going? Uh, busy as hell, man. Uh, a lot of drafts this week, and... Hopefully I will have I, right now. I have none next week and I'm trying to keep it that way. Uh, it's just, you know, can't have too many fab leagues. Sunday's already a disaster as is. So, um, you know, did some early drafts and obviously a lot has changed, man. I know I have some fab periods coming up and my goodness, if you draft in early March, some of the players that are available are uh, pretty good. So yeah, just a lot changing. The landscape has changed like it always is guys that are winning jobs, players being injured. So um, I've already had a couple of second round picks uh, get hurt. So fun stuff. Oh, Edwin, Edwin Diaz. Uh, I took Edwin Diaz in round two of TGFBI. So there we go. That is done. And I took Jose Altuve in the second round of Tout Wars. I took Edwin Diaz in the second round of the Barf draft. So I've got to replace him there. And I have no Altuve anywhere. Yeah, that was my only Altuve share. I mean, I dra I draft a little different there because it's OBP and pitching was, uh, I see, was pushed back a little bit. So um, I really didn't love anyone in that 2-3 area. I've said this. I've done a lot of drafts picking in the top five. My main event was pick three. Tower yeah. Wars was pick, where was I? Tower Wars, I think, was pick three also. Um, TGFBI, pick three. So I've had a lot of pick threes this year. Uh, my my GST draft, which I did Tuesday night, I actually had pick 14. So I have a lot of different players just because picking at the back end, uh, I got some players that I have not gotten any exposure to this year. So, um, but yeah, my I have the I have an FSGA draft on Thursday. I don't even know where I'm picking. Um, well, I don't. So you were in one. Did they do the draft order ahead of time or right before the draft? No, I mean I had it was ahead of time. Okay, so if I go there now, maybe that's the actual draft order because they don't maybe. say they don't say anything. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I cannot speak on behalf of the uh, the powers that be with the FSGA, um, but yeah, I knew it's so funny. Um, I have I've had picked two and three in a billion places. I, it's it's amazing how many times I've had that. I've had two, I've had three, and then I've had I would I, I think pick nine. No, no, no. Pick 11. Two drafts with pick 11 um, in, a, in in 14 teamers or 15 teamers. Um, oh, so if this draft room is right, I have pick two. <laughs> that's so fucking funny. Unbelievable. That's so funny. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't understand that either. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, how many, you know, how many sites in total are you playing with? Like the NFBC, like it's it's the weirdest thing. Like you could do KDS. But for those of you who don't know what that is, Kentucky Derby style, um, where you you, you know the, you get the uh, you you put your selections in, but then it's like you know it randomizes who gets their first pick and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, you know, I'm playing over there and I'm playing over at RT Sports. I think I have one draft coming up on Yahoo, maybe. Uh, I know, right, Yahoo. But I mean, it's it's amazing how the algorithms just keep putting the fucking people, same people in the same spots, same spots. Yeah, um, I for I think yeah, my NFBC online championship I did last week, I had pick seven in that one. But yeah, I've had a lot of early picks. Um, have an auction this week in my home keeper league, so uh, that has a ton of inflation. I actually have the second least amount of money to spend. So I don't have as much value as other teams, but yeah, it's just, uh, this is a, you know, crazy week with all the drafts and, you know, still got NBA going on and, uh, just a lot of stuff. So yeah, it's a busy time. Just a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's so true, man. It's so true. Um, all right, well, let's, Let's get to the, you know, because, you know, my ears peaked up Im immediately when you said it earlier. 
uh, talking about uh, the players who, you know, if you're going to be doing fab players who might be available and things like that. So let's let's start off here with um, who are the most notable, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say like no name players, but who are the who are the people who are, let's just say, rising up on your personal draft boards more? I mean, I think obviously David Robertson's probably a free agent in a lot of leagues. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think he's the closer. I know there was a report that came out that said it would be Robinson, Brooks Raley, uh, who might not be ready for the start of season. Some people think out of Vino. I think it's Robertson to start. Obviously, they could make a trade at some point, but I don't think they're going to do it immediately. Uh, Anthony Volpe, who is just, oh, my God, he is skyrocketing up draft boards. Uh, huh. I mean, I, I was surprised how early he was going in some of the main events, and we still don't even know if he makes the team. So some no, type no, no. Of oh, you know what? Here you go. Not not so much breaking news, but uh, while Jim Bowden was off covering the uh, the WBC uh, and all the players over there, he's been in contact with uh, with Aaron Boone and Brian Cashman uh, as well. And uh, and according to uh, Jim, Volpe has officially made the opening day team. OK, but that's not official anywhere else, right? Has not been has not been released into the wild yet. Jeez, I, I'm afraid to see how early now he's going to go in drafts. Uh, let me see. Where did he go? Actually, I was in the draft last night. I was like, oh, I can't believe Volpe didn't go yet. And because, um, you know, figure a lot of Yankee fans. I think he went like 12th, 13th round in a 15 team league, but he's going to go higher, man. So that's a guy, Clark Schmidt. Um, I see Reed Devers has really risen, but he's not going to be a free agent in leagues. Um, you say Reed Detmers? Yeah, he's risen up draft boards, but I don't okay. think he's a free agent. Um, David Peterson might be a free agent in some leagues. Okay. Because uh, Quintana went down a couple weeks ago. Um, trying to think off the top of my head. But yeah, there's there's quite a few players i mean i guess jarek's a pro for us he's a boost now that he's playing Jerks in colorado a, yeah why why wouldn't he see a boost playing the outfield in colorado now yeah i actually think i took him in uh what draft was i doing uh, i think i was uh i was wrapping up my uh my ras ball uh which is more or less a draft and hold uh type thing and yeah that's where i uh, i ended up getting him as well so um, TJ Friedel, that's a guy who I see who could be available in some leagues who seems to be moving up draft boards as well. I know, uh, you were in on him. I was talking about him, uh, to somebody else. I was also looking at, uh, at Will Benson, the, the kid from Cincinnati. Yeah. If he makes the team. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like really good speed. Um, and, and could see, you know, like that's, that's the, the, the funny thing, like looking at some of these guys who are, you know, on bad teams, but are still going to get that playing time. You might, you're not loving on them, but if, if TJ Friedel and Will Benson are full-time outfielders in Cincinnati, no, it's not a great team, but it's a, it's a, an amazing ballpark and, and they're going to hit, you know, against, you know, shitty teams too. Yeah, no, there's, again, if you did your draft weeks ago, like we did tout and labor early March, uh, there's, there's definitely players on that waiver wire that are going to see a boost. And of course, still trying to figure out the closing jobs uh, for many teams. Uh, obviously, the first few games are going to be interesting. You know, a guy like Matthew Boyd's had a great spring, mm -hmm. uh, shown great control. Um, as I mentioned, Clark Schmidt, um, assuming he's in the rotation to start the year. Um, so, yeah, I think that's oh, Jared Schuster from Atlanta, if he wins the fifth. Spot now. I start. I see, he went pretty high in the main events, but I still think in casual leagues, uh, people might not be aware of him. Um, I know he still is battling, battling Dodd for that fifth spot, and I know Mike Soroka made his spring debut today and was throwing ninety five. Um, so maybe it's short lived. But again, you want to roster these guys on the back half uh, and see what happens. You know, some of them will hit. That's pretty funny. We we did a uh, another mock draft for the uh, fantasy alarm staff last night while you were doing the uh, the Gotham League, and my last two picks in a and it was just it was twelve team, twenty nine rounds. My last two picks, I had the uh, I had the uh, the second overall pick, I think, in that one might have been the third, um, but my last two picks back to back were uh, were Schuster and Dodd. Yeah, I mean, look, might as well take a shot on it at yeah, least for the first the you know month of the season. 
It's the Braves, man. They do a really good job of evaluating players. And Spencer Strider was one of the guys that came out of nowhere last year. So not saying those guys will be, but you definitely take stock in a team like Tampa, Atlanta, L.A., the Giants when it comes to turning around pitchers. Yeah, they definitely do. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's one of the reasons why uh, I, I routinely watch them and, uh, and and look at that back end of the rotation. You know, it's like there are some teams where you'd love looking at the back end of the rotation. There are some teams where you're like, I won't even come close to it. Right? Like, I won't even I don't even think about Kansas City's back end of the rotation. But you give me the Braves uh, and their track record, uh, 100 percent. So. All right, let's see. So Volpe, I, I, I like doing this like risers and fallers type thing. Um, let's focus on for those people who are still to draft, because let's face facts. You and I are recording here on Wednesday, March the 22nd. I'm sure this weekend is going to be big for a lot of people. There are going to be a lot of drafts uh, coming up over the next, uh, you know, next several days. So for those who are, are focusing on that, um, let's talk about some of the, the players who are obviously shooting up draft boards regularly and, and whether or not, you know, the juice is worth the squeeze. Like, you know, I, I will start it off with the kids because these guys, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how early I'm seeing Corbin Carroll go right now. Having a good spring. He's very fast. He is expected to be the everyday outfielder uh, in center field for the Diamondbacks. We assume he's going to hit fairly high up in the order as well. Is he a fourth round pick though for you? Is like I, I mean, because that's really even in twelve team leagues. Uh, you know, the FSGA one that I did on Monday was a fourteen teamer, and and Carroll went in the early fourth. But then I was doing a the twelve team mock last night, and fucking Corbin Carroll went off early fourth there too. So, is you know, are are you that guy, Adam? Are you going to take him that early? No, and I have no shares. I think the only way I would do it is if somehow I was really light on speed after the first three picks. Uh -huh. But even then, I, I kind of don't see it. And he went in the third round of my draft last night, which is a 15 team. Holy league. shit. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, I mean, I get it. You know, Arizona, look, it's, it's, obviously. It's, it's possible. He was, look, people, uh, people were probably saying the same thing about Bobby Witt last year. And it worked out. But you got to remember, not all these guys work out. Everyone points to Julio Rodriguez and Bobby Witt. There's a lot of guys that fail. Yeah, where did Julio Rodriguez go in drafts last year? Um, it, Do you know how many people are, like, hitting me up with their keepers? And they're like, yeah, I got Julio Rodriguez in the in the 15th round. It's a, it depends when you drafted. If you did uh -huh. an earlier draft, yes. But I forgot the exact date, but he was announced that he was going to make the team. And I don't remember if it was a week or two before the season, but once that announcement was made, I know he was going in the, at least in the competitive leagues, I did six, seventh round. Okay. Um, six, I, seventh I, round. And that's fine. That's where Bobby Witt was going too. Now nah, Bobby Witt was going in the fourth round. Was he? Yeah. Well, it depends when you drafted. Cause okay. So TGFBI last year, I got him in round six or seven, but remember that draft was end of February. Right. So at that point you were like, you weren't hundred percent sure. But once we got closer, he was going in the fourth, fifth round of big draft. So, I mean, look, again, for Carroll, for me, I'm not going to do it. I just don't – I don't know if there's enough power. Yeah, the steals are great and everything. I know outfield is kind of bad. Dude, when I look at – like, you look at some of the outfielders going after him. Luis Robert, guy's never played 100 games in his career. Cedric uh -huh. Mullins was bad against lefties last year. Um, Adolis Garcia – I mean, he's done it two years in a row, but chases a lot of bad pitches. Definitely could see a downfall. Kyle Schwarber, who I love. I mean, I know the average isn't great, but I I mean, I, I like Kyle Schwarber. Eloy Jimenez, who I did take last night like a sucker. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, I, he already had the calf issue. They're saying it's not serious. It was crap. So I really wish they would DH him. But the outfielder in that range, it, it's not appealing at all to me. So... I see why people are doing it, but I can't. I just think it's too early for me. There's better players that I feel more comfortable with in that range. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely. I really do. I, and I wish him nothing but the best. But I have no shares of him because he's just going so early right now. And it's just it's not working 
uh, you know, just according to my build. I mean, had he fallen to me in like the fifth round of uh, of the FSGA draft the other night, then maybe I would have looked at it. But I mean, I mean, he didn't even come close to falling to me uh, at all. He went one, two, six, seven picks ahead of me in round four. So it's kind of crazy. Um, <clears throat> Gunnar Henderson, uh, you know, obvious rookie again, hasn't really been zipping up draft boards that much. I think the fact that he's having such a crap spring right now uh, and he was battling that wrist issue for a little bit, I think that's kind of held his ADP in check. I don't mind taking him in the seventh or eighth round, which is where he seems to be, you know, settled. But now I've start, started seeing some people, uh, you know, taking him in the sixth and and moving up, just talking about how, you know, top heavy third base is. Are you pro or con Gunnar Henderson? I haven't taken him anywhere. So, I mean, I'm not really worried about third base. Um, if I don't get one of the top ones, um, there are some that I like uh, later on. So uh, he just has not fallen into any of my teams. I, I think usually in the area he goes, I'm getting a pitcher. Um, okay. All right. I could see that. I mean, I'm just looking at one team of mine. I don't really <clears throat> recall. But, yeah, I mean, usually I go heavy on the offense, and uh, and I'm looking at pitching in the sixth and seventh round. So. Um, yeah, Henderson wouldn't be, you know, a, a top guy for me. It also depends, you know, did I was I able to, you know, secure Manny Machado or Austin Riley um, ahead of time? Did I use my first round pick on Jose Ramirez instead? Um, and then, all right, so then the infamous one, and again, we don't know if he's going to be on the starting roster, but I, I, I don't know how you keep him down. Jordan Walker. <clears throat> this this dude's gone from being like a like a fifteenth sixteenth round you know take a flyer on him uh, to a tenth round uh, you know hey look at what he's doing uh, and now I'm seeing him go in the uh, in the eighth possibly even the seventh depending on how the, the size of your league. Yeah, I have no shares. His NFBC main event ADP, which is ten main events, is one twenty four. So. Yeah, people are are high on him, and I'm sure if they officially announce, hey, he's making the team this week, he'll move up further. So mm-hmm. um, I haven't paid that price tag on him, so I don't have him anywhere. So I hope he sucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you don't hope he sucks because I, I have I have him, you know, I, I have him in a couple of places, <clears throat> but I, you know, drafted early, so I got him in like the 15th, 16th round. Of that for the FSGA, when I saw Corbin Carroll go in the early fourth and then Gunnar Henderson in the seventh, I was like, fuck it, man. I'm just going to make my move. I'm going to take a guy who I just, I really want on my team. I believe in him. I like the uh, the player. I like the hit tool. I like everything that I've seen about him this spring. I have yeah, I've very, you know, limited fear that Dylan Carlson will suddenly wake up and they'll be like, oh, yeah. We should still make sure that Dylan Carlson's our starter. Um, I think the one thing that's kind of holding back on Jordan Walker and then making that announcement is I think they want to see him more in the outfield. I guess his defense is, you know, he's still learning, still growing because they're not going to put him at third uh, where he qualifies everywhere. But, you know, they want to make sure that that defense is solid. That's one of the things that, you know, St. Louis is known for. They're not gonna. They're not gonna sacrifice defense just to get you know a young kid's bat into the uh, into the game. Yeah, they have a lot of depth on that team. They have so many ways that they can go. Uh, if it was a different team, I think we'd be like, oh yeah, he's definitely making it. I mean, he should. I think we all believe he will. But they just have a a lot of different ways that they can go. Yeah. Um, about to start moving up on the boards even more so. Um, Kind of a youngster too, Gabriel Marino, a uh, catcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks. We know that the kid's all about power. He was a great prospect in the uh, in the in the Toronto organization. Uh, Carson Kelly was just diagnosed with a uh, a fractured forearm. He's going to miss the first two months at least. And Marino's going to get that job. Marino's going to get those at bats. It's a good power bat, at a, at, you know, at, at a at a position that kind of struggles. He's also um, he's, he's got, uh, he's just an on-base machine, like a machine. 
Um, you know, he's he's like rocking a minimum of like a 370 OBP uh, at any level right now. So thoughts on on him? I like him. I just haven't been able to get him anywhere because typically I'm taking one of the top 10 to 12 catchers and then really waiting on the position. So uh -huh. last night's draft, I got Sean Murphy. Um, I also took Sean Murphy in the main event. I mean, he slated to clean up for the Braves. I mean, come on, bro. You're going to have uh, Acuna, Olsen, and Riley in front of you uh, and, and Albies and Michael Harris behind you. I mean, and you're going from <laughs> Oakland to Atlanta. I just, you, you, you can't ask for a better spot. So, you know, I'll get like him, William Contreras, um, Wilson Contreras, uh, Alejandro Kirk. So I get a lot of those guys. So if I'm doing that, like, I don't want to take my second catcher a few rounds later, but if you miss out on those guys, then Moreno's fine to get as your one. And then you kind of wait, but yeah, I do like him. I think you're going to see his price rise now because of this news. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think that you'll, you'll start to see him, him climb up, uh, draft boards. I'm trying to find out where he, he went in the 12th of a 14 teamer. Um, you know, it's so funny that you brought up Murphy because I took Walker and Murphy was in my queue. I took, took Walker and Murphy went immediately the next pick. And so it came back around and you knew that I was waiting on Murphy because I grabbed Tyler Stevenson immediately. I was like, ah, <laughs> Dude, Dr. Roto was so fucking up in my queue and shit. It was ridiculous how many players he took from me throughout this draft. It was crazy. Yeah, he took a couple of mine too in Tout, and then he said that myself and Rudy Gamble took a lot from him. So I guess Dude, that's looking, how it goes sometimes. Right? Tristan McKenzie, George Kirby, Taylor Ward, um, Drew Rasmussen, Anthony Volpe, Garrett Mitchell. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I mean, like, we brought him onto the show, uh, onto the broadcast. And I was like, dude, I hope you finish in dead last and you get relegated out of this league. <laughs> I hate you so much. I'm sure he took <laughs> kind to that. <laughs> he did, actually. Yeah, I, I love Dr. Roto. He knows that uh, I'm, I'm always kidding. We always have this uh, first time call, long time listener, first time caller banter uh, that goes back and forth with us. Um, on that. All right. So here we go. On the rise, sometimes a little too crazy. Corbin Carroll, Gunnar Henderson, Jordan Walker, Gabriel Marino, Anthony Volpe. Like these are guys that, you know, you have to, you know, like that's always the thing that, uh, you know, it kills me with ADP and people need to need to really pay attention to that is you got to look at a date range for what your ADP is. Now, that's one of the things that I love about the NFBC's ADP, because you can set the calendar for it. And, and, you know, just anybody out there, like it's tough because there's no trading allowed. And, you know, a lot of, you know, certain players, you know, a lot of starting pitching gets elevated um, in those, you know, in, in all of those leagues. But the fact that you can identify really where, these kids are going right now as opposed to, you know, two months of, you know, being taken the 18th to the 25th round because nobody knows if you're even going to make the team to where they are now. I mean, it's like light years difference. And a lot of people, they just don't know, you know, where to start taking guys. So I think that's a, it's just, it's a good lesson for everybody to, to kind of pay attention to know your, you know, know the source of your ADP. You know, how many times have I you know, seen somebody, how many times have you seen somebody in a draft room, like they'll take a player and somebody's like, oh, you know, their ADP's like, you know, seven rounds later. Yeah, well, A, ADP's a guideline, but B, have you seen where this dude's been going in the last two weeks? It's crazy. Yeah, that's why my draft, draft, draft grades, advice, baby. We're just, my draft, we're giving draft advice. That's why my draft grades usually suck. Like my CBS draft grade last night sucked. I'm like, yeah, because I took players that don't fit in your stupid rankings. Wait, what? I'm, um, so, you know, the draft grades. Oh, I, oh, yeah. fucking draft grades. Please. Yeah, they're terrible. And that's why I love when I finish near the bottom. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's uh, talk to me at the end of the year. <laughs> The other thing, too, man, all, all these fucking projections and also oh, I have you guys projected finish here. I don't give a shit. Talk to me at the end of the year because half the fucking team's going to be different, man. 
I know you need something to talk about and you're looking at draft targets, but it's the stupidest thing in the world, man, because we all know half the team and maybe more than half is not going to be the same at the end of the year. So you can criticize my team all you want on draft day. Talk to me at the end of the year. Yeah. It's <laughs> I mean, do, do you have to get, like consistently put out the cliche comment of you don't win a league on draft day? Like nobody gets that. It's, uh, you know, <clears throat> and, and people sit there and freak out about it. Like people who have drafted early and if they lost a player are already like sitting there trying to make trades. And I'm like, why do you want to blow up your team just because you, yes, you, you lost – uh, you know, Edwin Diaz, you're, you're going to need to chase saves throughout the year. Why do you want to blow up what you just did on draft day uh, in order to just chase the one category and replace that player as opposed to just go for saves on the, you know, because you're never going to get anybody. You're never going to get anybody of Edwin Diaz's quality or with his job security or whatever you want to say. What made him that kind of an early round pick? You're never going to, you know, you're not going to replace that. Um, and and why would you want to just, you know, oh, fuck my outfield then because I want to make sure that I get saves? It, it's, it's crazy. Like, I got to understand. Like, you know, we, we talk about trusting the process. And, and that means your draft is part of your process. How do you not trust it? Yeah, I mean, look, I, like I said, I've already lost two second round picks, but not going to panic. And last year, I'll give you an example, Tout Wars, which is a 15-team league. I drafted for Fernando Tatis in the first round. In August, I had 120 points without right. Tatis the whole year. Now, I didn't win the league. Uh, team fell off once they announced Tatis' suspension because uh, locker room chemistry was just really fucked up. It just the team just fell apart. We thought Tatis was coming back. He got suspended and, you know, camaraderie fell apart. So that can happen in fantasy. But the point is, even if you lose a first round pick, I mean, there are so many roster spots even in a deeper league now, not a mono league, AL and only, yeah, you're probably fucked if you have Edwin Diaz. <laughs> but not just many fuck, of you just guys. Just fucking give up right now. Yeah, just, you know, just start to go to NFL best ball drafts. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can still overcome it. It just makes it more difficult. Because uh, we know there's going to be saves on the waiver wire. There's probably, there are relief pitchers right now that we're not drafting, we're not even talking about, that are somehow going to find their way into saves. It always works that way. So, you just have to continue to grind and you, you can't worry about it. Like it sucked. I mean, losing it with Diaz, Jose Altuve, it sucks, but you know what? Nothing you could do. Suck it up, move on. Suck it up and move on. Good advice. Yeah. I just, yeah. You know, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a six month long season. It's a flipping grind. No, you know what? I, I truly believe one of the reasons why I have success is because I just continue to work. Um, there's a lot of people who just get deflated. You know, they get off mm -hmm. to a bad start. They kind of give up a little bit or they don't put as much time and effort. And I just can't, I can't do that, which is why, like I always say, I need to cut back on leagues because I know if my name's on it, even if there's no money on the line, like an industry league, I just know myself. Like I take too much pride with my name being on there. You know, we talked about labor two years ago. I was in last place after the first two months. I was like, no way this is fucking going to happen. I'm never going to finish at the bottom. And, you know, I got as high as third and finished fifth. You know, OK, I didn't win the league. But the point is, I'm just not going to give up uh, no matter how bleak it gets. My entire roster would have to be on the IL for me to finish last. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's. And, and I mean, we've talked about that, especially with the industry leagues where, you know, halfway through the season, you know, halfway through the season, when when football content starts to ramp up, half your league disappears. You know, yeah. and it's it, it, it's it sucks. It, especially, you know, obviously, you know, I'm talking baseball, you know, even in football, though, like once once they start to fall out of it, they stop paying attention to it because they're in so many different leagues that it's like, oh, well, I might as well just pay attention to, you know, the ones that I'm I'm doing well. In. And they let the other teams just fall to shit. I mean, we've seen it a, a billion times. So, you know, that's that's definitely that's one of the things. And that's a that's, that's a point that I actually. I made at a uh, at, at our uh, our our work meeting this morning. Uh, nobody's gonna fucking out hustle us. 
nobody, nobody is going to, nobody's going to work harder than we do. And that's, that's huge. That's, you know, and, and I, and I was talking about it in the, in the sense of the fantasy alarm team, you know, like with, with what we, you know, with what we've done over these three months that, you know, we, you know, our, our, our subscriptions and our traffic have never been higher, right? We, our year over year numbers have been fantastic. Um, the community that we continue to build over at Fantasy Alarm, like I mean, it was it, it's 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 that good. I had a guy last night who you know I just I put this out into our Discord because um, I didn't know that you had the the Gotham draft, so we were one G short. A GST, a GST. Sorry, Gotham GST. It's all you're all. No, there is a there is a guy. There is one. Yo, yeah, you all look alike. Yeah, all, all you drafts look alike. Okay. But you know what I'm saying, though, right? So, so I put it out in Discord, and and there was a guy who, like, I said, you know, uh, whatever, first come, first serve, one spot, come draft with all the fantasy alarm apps, boom, like, like all of a sudden everybody wanted in on it, and like fucking guy hit it, like I was like, boom, you got it, no problem, whatever. I mean, I'm like, it's it's this kind of a like of of a fucking community that that we've done. Why? Because our analysts are dedicated to you winning. Of course we want to win ourselves. But if you aren't if you're subscribing to our site, if you're listening to our advice here on the podcast or or you know on on the radio, okay? And you're not winning, well then I fucking take that shit personally. I definitely do. I care more about my subscribers winning than I even care about my own wins. And if I, you know, I I've, I've always said this, I never Lay, you know, I never say to bet something if I don't bet it myself. I'm in this shit with everybody, and that's that's like like that's the the fantasy alarm mentality. That's the group that we are, and that's the thing. Like, doesn't matter what kind of adversity we're gonna get. Nobody in any fucking legal ever outwork us. Oh, speaking of betting, I have a question for you. Sure. So my guy, our guy, Ani Sridhar, uh messaged me the other day with a, a nice promo. So I deposited $500 on DraftKings and got two free $250 bets. So you obviously have to use them within seven days. So the first one I used the other night, $250. I parlayed Clay Thompson over 21 and a half points, which I gave out on my social media, TikTok, Instagram, Instagram at Aaron 88 TikTok at Adam Ronis, and gave it out on the playbook, a better sports network also gave out on the playbook, Kelly Olenek over 10 and a half rebounds and assists. So I parlayed that with one of the free bets for plus 245 and won $613. So I had to use the other $250 free bet yesterday. So we were talking about it on the show and Justin Fenstermann produced Adam Bernard. They're like, yeah, you already made a profit. So just do a single bet, you know, to double the money or like 250 to win you know, with the juice, 235, 230. I said, why? I already won $613 off a free bet, right? And right. so I'm I'm looking for a home run here. Yeah, so, why play it safe? Thank you, buddy. Thank you. I'm, so, already, I'm already up. Right. Why play it safe with a free bet? Thank you. So last night I did a six-leg parlay. Uh, the first game was oh, man. What, wait, what were the odds on this six game parlay? I got to know. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, oh. I would have won. I would have won 1100 bucks. Oh. So I would pl oh, plus 460. Oh my God. That's not even that outlandish either. It's not. So uh, the first game was magic wizards. I had two props combined minus 129. They hit. Second game was Celtics Kings. They were combined plus 130. They hit. It was the last game, Thunder Clippers. I needed Josh Giddy five assists or more. He hit. I needed Russell Westbrook five assists or more. He had two. And I lost. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I still, it's the right mentality, right? They're like, oh, you sound like a gambler now. No, man. I already won $613. So I might as well shoot for a bigger one so it's a, that's I mean, but it's because it's a free bet yeah. it's a free bet that's the thing 
Like I could have, I could have done Jason Tatum over 28 and a half points. That was my bet of the day on the playbook. I could have done that. And then I would have won, I don't know, like two, two thirty. but I mean, I already banked $613 off nothing. And that's the thing you deposited 500. Like if you put, if you, if you use that 500 and put 250 on your first, and then you yeah, that, won, that's great. And then you had right. your other 250. You'd probably play it a little bit safer than a six leg single game parlay. But these are free bets, right? Go for fucking broke, dude. On that's, the second one for sure. After you win the first one, I agree. I mean, I'm I, with you. I already have a profit of six hundred thirteen dollars just for depositing five hundred. So, um, I'd rather take the shot of winning. 1100 then two and i get it trust me these parlays are not easy to hit like i had reasonable like westbrook all i asked for was five assists the dude, dude gets five assists almost every night he had two last night you know yeah i probably but then i look back and like uh why didn't i just do shea gills alexander 25 points or more since he scores 30 or more every game and he had 31 but you know you always do that when you look back on it you know so um but yes i all we we encourage being reasonable here and i know i do mention these parlays from time to time and i i lose a lot of parlays by one leg so as i say don't take the don't take a lot of your bankroll parlays they should only be if you hit a big bet maybe you say okay i'm gonna take you know five percent to the side for a parlay and if you do you know it depends on your budget ten dollars twenty dollars DraftKings has these same game parlays that are risk-free ten dollars they give you max bet back tnt for fanduel on the TNT games, you know, if you bet ten dollars on a parlay and it loses, you get your ten dollars back in credit to use again. Like they had a promo for the WBC on DraftKings. If you bet the USA money line, fifteen dollars you get. So I bet the fifteen bucks of the USA they lost, so now I got a fifteen dollar bonus bet. So it's all about discipline. I just, I'll preach it again because you see all these people on social media putting out their big hits for parlays. They're not showing you the five previous ones they all lost. So just be disciplined. I know it's tantalizing. Oh, look, I could turn twenty dollars into a thousand, or but you got to remember the odds are long for a reason. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, we've we've yeah, I mean, we've had this conversation, and you know, as far as that goes, um, you know, to to people out there, it's you know, we we always promote the uh, you know being responsible, and we always talk about the fact that single game parlays that's not the way to make money. It's it's the just it's say- not. The book said that's their most profitable is the single game parlays. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think that the number was out of like four point two billion dollars in bets. Um, there was like some ridiculous uh, number that was like I, I want to say it was probably like I don't know, like twelve million or fourteen million in just single game parlays alone. That that the books won, like uh, you know, of like you know, spanning a year's worth of like bets everywhere, four point two billion dollars, fourteen million alone just on single game parlays. It's crazy, dude. And it's it's like I mean, the amount of money that they make off of that is just it's it's crazy. I mean, again, if you're if if you're you know if if you've got discretionary income and you want to have some fun, okay, fine. But don't make that your only means of betting. That's not that's not smart, and that's not going to turn a profit in any way, shape, or form. So, um, I you know whatever I don't. So so Ani and Fensty were a, a bunch of little. No, little, Ani was no, it wasn't Ani. It was old uh, ladies. It wasn't Ani. Just Fensty. Yeah, and Adam Bernard, who our producer on uh, BSN. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't think I know Adam. I maybe I did I meet Adam at the FSGA maybe he was he was there okay so then yeah I guess I I probably did meet him funny he didn't seem like a like a chicken when I met him <laughs> <laughs> oh shit all right let's get let's get a little sidebar of gambling there I love it um let's get back to some some MLB because we're talking about guys who are climbing up in the uh, in draft boards right now. The ADP is uh, is rising. Um, I'm not sure if there are any others that 
really stand out to you that much. I feel like I feel like some of the guys like Jared Kelnick and and Garrett Mitchell, they're not really climbing that much, so it's not really that noticeable. They're still, you know, beyond the 15th and 16th round uh for that. But any other names that you uh that you see that you know you're just like, man, this dude is climbing still. Uh, yeah, Reed Detmers, who I mentioned earlier, he's been moving up. Uh, let's see. Usually it's some pitchers that are moving up because we saw early on that maybe pitching wasn't going as early. Right. Uh, oh, now I'm like in fucking drafts and pe- people are just grabbing pitchers left and right now. Yeah, it tends to happen as we get closer to the season and maybe a couple injuries or guys aren't ready. You start to see players move up. All right. Well, I mean, I think we're, we're we're at a good starting point there. Let's go the other direction. What about guys you see dropping? Um, obviously, Altuve is going to be a name that we have to discuss here. Where where do you feel comfortable? To, and don't say the second round because you did that already. <laughs> where do you feel comfortable taking Jose Altuve, knowing that he's going to miss the first two months? Yeah, I'm probably going to pass. I mean, if you're in a league with unlimited IL spots, you can be a little bit more aggressive. But I don't like to start the season knowing I'm going to miss a player because more injuries are going to happen. And then you just dig yourself a deeper hole. So I'm probably going to pass on him. I didn't take him last night. Um, Yeah, if you have no IL spots, it's difficult to take him. I know second base is pretty thin, but. You know, there could be setbacks. He could struggle when he comes back. It's a thumb. I mean, that's a big deal for hitting. People think, oh, it's just a thumb. I mean, he could come back in two months and then struggle the first month. So now you got three months, half the season, where you're not getting top-notch production. So I'm generally going to pass unless everyone in the league thinks like me. Uh, so I don't know, maybe 12th round in a 15-team league if I have an IL spot, maybe. See, that's that's the range that I was thinking as well. Um I saw it last night in uh, in the mock draft that we did. John and Pemba took Altuve somewhere around the eighth or the ninth round of a twelve teamer. Um, <clears throat> Chris Towers from CBS and the and the FSGA took him in the ninth round. Um, you know, off of uh, yeah, in in a, in a fourteen teamer. He went um, around yeah, the I'll, he I'll, went around eleven in my fifteen team league last night where we do have three IL spots. Okay, so for me, yeah, I mean that's that's definitely a, a a tough situation to be in. But I, you know, if you do have the IL spots to give, <clears throat> no, I don't want to. I'm I'm with you. If it's going to cost me an, an, a ninth or tenth round pick for Altuve, no. But if I'm sitting there, it's the twelfth or the thirteenth round, and I have IL room, yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, it's the same thing with uh, with Bryce Harper. And I actually took Bryce Harper um, in the FSGA, and I, it's the only share that I've that I have uh, that I have of, of Harper this year at all. And just you know, the reports are coming in that they're you know it's 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 nice. It's you know it's possible mid June DHing, um, you know, in the twelfth round. Uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of interested, especially for the fact that you know he's just you know I mean I you know don't you're you're glumming up your uh, you're gumming up your your utility spot because he does not qualify for outfield people keep in mind um <clears throat> but that's kind of the range where i'm looking at for bryce harper who's you know obviously expected to miss more time than uh than altuve so so i'm i'm in i'm in that range who else who else adam who's dropping in drafts that you're just like i can't believe they got him that round right polanco because he has yet to participate in the spring and it looks like he might not be ready to start the season. He was a player I really liked going in. Uh-huh. Um, so kind of sucks. Uh, he actually went two picks after Jose Altuve in my draft last night. Um, it's tough, man, because this knee bothered him last year. And I believe he did not have surgery. So it is concerning that he has yet to play in the spring. And... He's probably going to begin the season now on the IL. So kind of sucks there. So um, he missed the final month last year with a knee injury and yeah. hasn't played in a game yet. So not a good sign. So I definitely have to back off of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, I think uh, I'm, I'm just kind of looking at a draft Tony, board. Tony right Gonsolin now. obviously is following because he's going to miss a month. Right. Yep. He's going to be uh, he's going to be down. Uh, they just sent down the Dodgers just sent down Gavin Stone. That dude looked amazing this spring. Yeah, he's someone who could be up this year. You know, Mets sent down Francisco Alvarez. You got to remember, Brandon uh, fought also sent down. So these guys could be up at some point this year. Their names sure. just keep on the radar. <sighs> no doubt. No doubt. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else who's like really, um, you know, kind of fallen down. That Maybe it's not always it's not always injury you know, attached to it, but maybe it is for the most part. I mean, part. Carl, obviously Carlos Rodon, but he hasn't fallen as far as I, I, I thought. His ADP in the main event is 75. Yeah. Yeah, I, I looked at, uh, at Rodon. I have Rodon in a, in a couple of spots from, from early drafts, and I was still getting him in like the, you know, I was getting him in like the fifth round, sixth round. And that was uh, after the diagnosis? No, 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 oh, no, no. That okay. was before the oh, diagnosis. Yeah, that was, that After was, the diagnosis, yeah. I haven't really seen him fall off that much. Yeah. I mean, I guess they are believing the reports that, oh, he's had it before. And if it was a game, he'd be able to pitch now and it's managing it. But it's a little concerning for a guy that's had a difficult time staying healthy. Like, I, I know how good he could be, but the price is high. Where on the other side, Joe Musgrove, like, I am buying him right now. Uh, in my NFBC online. Oh, there's another guy who's definitely dropping where he oh, should be. I'm scooping up, scooping up. He might, he might miss one start. I mean, he dropped a, a weight on his toe. It's not his arm or anything. So no. um, he's, he's a, a value right now. I think uh, again, could have a setback, but Oh, you know, who's really rising Chris sale. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, I know he yeah. got bombed on Tuesday, but um, he's rising. Yeah, sale. I'm looking at sale right now in the he went in the eighth round of the FSGA. Rodon went in the uh in the ninth, the last pick of the ninth round. That's probably the lowest I've seen him fall. Yes, me too. Sick. Sick. Dude, I'm pumped, man. Fucking draft season, dude. How excited are you? Um, very, but also fatigued. So uh, oh, stop. <laughs> Don't be such a puss. I'm Come not I'm just saying Ooh, I'm, I'm fatigued. Dude, I've had the flu for like a week now, a week and a half. I've been like coughing. Like you you haven't heard it because I keep clicking off my mic when you start talking. I'm like, please just ramble on for a little while, Adam. And I'm like hacking behind the scenes here, dying. I'm still psyched about this shit, dude. Fuck fatigue. Come on. Fatigue. It's because your Mets suck, right? Is that what it is? No. What do you mean no? Because they suck. <laughs> you know who I have a bunch of this year again? Lindor. Lindor. I fucking love that kid. I really do. I, I think this is the year. This is the year. I start off the FSGA draft with Acuna, Lindor, and Jazz Chisholm. I have no Jazz. I wanted him in my online championship, and he went one pick before me. I, I wanted. I mean, he's a guy that's rising too. I think he went in one of the main events in round two. So, like people, obviously, there's obviously a, an immense ceiling for him. There's obviously some risk with injury, and now he's moving to the outfield where he might be aggressive and. You know, could get hurt, but the ceiling is just, uh, yeah, he went as early as 24 in one of the main events. So that is Ooh. round two. And his ADP in the, the main events is 35. I love the player, man. Of course. I definitely yeah. love the player. Yeah, I wanted to get, I wanted to get at least one share. And right now I don't have any, I, but yeah, he's, a, he's kept in my keeper league. So I guess it'll, uh, Comes down to the FSGA on Thursday, whether I can get him. And if I have pick two, that means I have to take him in the third round. <laughs> I, might <do laughs> I, might, I might do it. I might do it. Do it. I had the third pick of this. I took him in the third round. I might, man. You know what? I might. Looking at what's there. Yeah, I might. But then again, there's some there's some bad players in those leagues. So they might let something slip to me. Oh, spicy. <laughs> you know who's not rising up draft boards who it really kind of surprises me? Oh. <clears throat> Nick Castellanos. 
Um, I don't, I, I don't get how it. people don't like think about the, the potential for the rebound here. I mean, I know he had some injuries last year. He also, I think, put a lot of pressure on himself uh, with the contract. I know it's a good ballpark. He also, had another, he also had another kid. Oh, that's his fault. Well, no, 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 not in the sense of that, but in the sense of a crying fucking baby at home when you're trying to, like, rest during a homestand. Um, okay, I get no, it. No, 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 dude, I did, I did this whole thing where um, I guess it was, um, was it when Texas moved to uh, Globe Life for the first time, and I did this whole, man, when did I do this article? I don't remember. It was... Um, I was looking at the uh, at the Texas pitching staff and I was trying to figure out why everybody was, you know, everybody was so great at home and they were so shitty on the road. And you were like, oh, well, the ballpark factors, whatever, except for CJ Wilson. Who was so shitty at home, but on the road, he was fucking money in the bank. Remember CJ Wilson? Yeah. So I dove in like even further and I just kind of like really like investigated the whole thing. And he had a kid that year and he had a crying baby at home. And when he was on the road, he was in bed in the hotel, lights out, rest. He calls his wife, talks to her, everything good with the baby. Yeah. Boom. Night sleep. No fucking elbow in the head saying you feed the kid now or anything like that. So. I, you know, it, it's funny. I brought that up to uh, to Bowden, and Bowden was like, he started talking about a number of players where he's seen that happen too. Kid at home, and it's crazy. First kid is the worst. Like, you know, third or fourth kid, it's not a big deal. First kid's always the worst. A little something to humanize these kids, man. Humanize them. They're not just names on a piece of paper. Oh, I know that. I know that. There's always you know, things that we find out after the year that they were going through, and it kind of explains some stuff, you know? Uh Uh-huh. Pablo Sandoval, right? was, like, completely garbage. uh, Yeah, but so then, but Castellanos didn't hit for power at home, though, either. Or the road. No, I know he didn't hit for power at home. Or the road. Well, because he was banged up and hurt. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying, what I'm saying is, is Castellanos had a multitude of things last year. Between injuries, pressure of the new contract, new kid, like all of that shit was like, I mean, it was fucking with him. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I'm I'm looking at the rebound here and I, I gonna, I, I love it, man. Cause I feel like I'm getting a 3,100 bat in like the fucking ninth round. And I dig that. I definitely dig that. Um, all right. Well, you know, let's let's just, you know, we'll, we'll stick to just baseball here. ADP risers and fallers um, kind of keeping you guys up to date with all of the news and shit. Any other final thoughts here, Adam? Because, you know, people aren't going to hear from us again until after they draft this weekend. You got some words of wisdom you want to share some food for thought, perhaps? Yeah, just stay up to date on all the latest news. Make sure you you know, we're going to start to find out who's making the team, who's not. So also make sure during the draft that you check um, what's going on. I know during the MTM ultimate on Friday, during that draft, Brandon Nimmo got injured. And I think the team that took him didn't know. Now it might sound like he's not going to miss much time. We'll see. He said he's going to be fine. Every player says they're fine, but you do have to make sure you pay attention even during a draft to any type of news because you don't want to get stuck drafting a player to find out that they injured their knee that bad that night. So make sure you pay attention. Uh, and in the reserve rounds, take a lot of bullpen arms. Uh, I think I took, yes. I took like three guys last night. Uh, so again, we have a four day season, four days of the week to open next week. So you might actually probably want to get some of those relievers in there. There might be teams where, uh, that have three games that maybe your starter doesn't pitch. So um, especially at the end of the draft, too, you could look at the schedule for the opening week. Uh, but you want to take a chance on these relievers who. You know, there's so many unsettled situations. So that first weekend, maybe the guy that is second or third on the depth chart that is competing for a job 
gets two saves and they go, you know what? He was really good. Yeah, we're going to stick with him. So you want to have that guy on your team. You don't want to battle with everyone on Fab uh, to spend a ton of money because we know people are going to spend a lot of money on relievers since there's only a handful that are locked into the gig. And we already lost one in Edwin Diaz. Yeah, we have the uh, the closer grid over at, at Fantasy Alarm, and it's, you know, um, we color coordinate it, you know, green, yellow, orange, and red. And, you know, our boy Joe Galena uh, mans that. And I got to tell you, man, it is like it's it's crazy uh, how how small that green is. It's crazy how small, you know, how few guys there are. In there, he does have the Mets here still with Robertson in green. I don't know if I, how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. I think I'm gonna have to have words with Joe. We might have to throw hands over this. Is Joe a is Joe a Mets fan? Um, I think he. I thought he was a Yankees fan, and I talked to him quite a bit at Tout Wars. Yeah, I thought he was a Yankees fan too. I'm gonna have to have him move this shit, man. Because I would definitely not say that David Robertson is uh, is a you know has elite stability in the role right now. Dude's like 137 years old. Yeah, he was pretty good last year. I mean, I hope he is. I took him in the main event in round 14. My ah, second, second closer, you. though. My second closer, though. So I figured <laughs> in round four. I figured in round 14, it was worth a shot there. Round 14, yes, 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 absolutely. For a 14th rounder, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd give that a shot, no doubt. Um, all right, well, best of luck to everybody out there in your drafts this weekend. As always, you can hit Adam and I up for, for any kind of questions. He's at Adam Ronis on Twitter. Uh, I'm at RotoBuzzGuy on Twitter. Happy to answer. You can also hit us up in the, uh, in the Fantasy Alarm Discord if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber to Fantasy Alarm, Trust me, you're going to want to do it. We just run an all sports package right now. Um, so you get everything that's behind our paywall. Uh, go to fantasyalarm.com slash Howard and just use the promo code Howard. And that'll take a, a full 50% off right immediately for the uh, for the whole subscription. And, uh, and you'll be fucking psyched um, because then you can jump into the discord and you can talk to me and Adam uh, whenever you want. You can hit up anybody from the Fantasy Alarm team. It is uh, well worth the price of admission, especially here during draft season. We actually have a, a, a room on our Discord specifically for if you are in a draft, in a live draft. We give you the live draft advice. Somebody is always in that room answering questions uh, no matter what so that you guys can be uh, fully covered. So uh, do yourselves a favor. Get your asses over to FantasyAlarm.com slash Howard. Use the promo code Howard. Take 50% off. Uh, if that doesn't work because they're about to fire me, uh, hit me up at rotobuzzguy at gmail.com, and I will I will uh, personally help you out and find that discount uh, for sure. But that's going to do it for us here uh, for this week's episode of Cash It. Uh, Adam's NBA prop articles coming out on PicksWise.com on Friday. I've got a bunch of shit over at FantasyAlarm.com right now. Spring training updates, the position battles. We posted our bold predictions. Uh, there's plenty of stuff to get in there. All the front office insights with me and Jim Bowden. It's all free over there for right now. The subscriptions will start up once the season starts. But for you, take advantage of the preseason shit. It's all free. That's going to do it for us. Big thank you to you for liking, subscribing, listening, uh, telling Adam that he's a, a, a homer for the Mets and, and we don't like him. Yeah. Uh, whatever well, you want to do. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm, I think the Braves are better than the Mets, but I'm a homer. Got it. I know you do. How much does that hurt when you say it, that? It does, it does hurt, hurt a lot? Bro. They're fucking good, man. They're better than the Mets. Does it hurt you? Does it, it does. really hurt? It does. That's awesome. I'm Fuck. glad that I'm, I'm glad you feel that. Go spin. Blue Jays and Rays. Whatevs, dude. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. It don't sure. bother me at all. I'll see what happens by the end of the year when you're not in the playoffs and we are. Mets are making the playoffs. Relax. Well, I don't know about that. We'll have to see. Okay. We'll have to see. Um, but there you go. I'll tell you what. Next week, uh, next week's preseason, right before the season starts, we'll be dropping the first episode, the last, the next episode of Cash It. Do you want to do uh, some futures and props, some last minute bets before the season starts? Sure. That's what we're gonna do. So stick around. We'll uh, we'll catch you guys next time. He's Adam Ronis. I'm Howard Bender. 
This has been the Cash It Podcast. Uh, bye-bye.